welcome to Side Character Quest. Today we'll be rejoining our Guildmaster Quail as she delves deep into an abandoned mine. Will she find her treasure? Will she make it out with her life? Find out now on this week's Side Character Quest. Looks like we, uh, we're at the bottom of this. Ah, uh, geez. That's a, that's a bit of a, a bit of a drop between those two stairs. Um, you look up and, uh, you can see maybe 20 feet up above you, maybe 30 mm-hmm. feet up above you. Um, a section of stairs has fallen out that's maybe, you know, 15, 10 or 15 feet. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a pretty large break bit of a climb to get back up. All right. Can I see anything at the bottom of this shaft? Uh, or do I can I see anything from the map of where where the path goes from here? Uh, so the map um, sort of ends around here. Um, it, it's it gets sort of vague that like. This is, you know, this is where the mine shaft is. This is where the secondary, you know, the deeper shaft is. Um, beyond that, uh, the map doesn't really have much useful information. It, it does seem to have like some indication of like, uh, you see like a line going in to the side of the shaft. Um, but it, it's, it's not really clear what that is. Can I do another check on the walls to see if there's either any more lazarite? Like if there's a higher concentration of lazarite or if there's any lapis tempest in the walls. Yeah, totally. Uh, so roll me an investigation check. And um, cool. I'm just going to assume that you, you know, are able to use this this spell. Um, so I'll say that you have advantage on this. All right. So investigation check. So I roll twice. Yep. And then you use the best of those rolls. Um, and it's OK. So hopefully it's the second one, because that first roll was a five. Um, and that was a nine and <sighs> plus two for intel uh, for intelligence. So that's 11. Yeah. Um, so you can still detect. Uh, I mean, so so you can still detect um, some of that lazarite. You can still detect some calcite as well. Um, you also uh, notice that this room that you're in, it continues off in one direction, and it also has a small hole on the side. Uh, but other than that, that's that's all you get from from this vague check. All right. Do I hear that scratching noise? Uh, roll me a perception. I will say that, yes, you do. Just from like your passive perception, you still hear a little bit of that scratching. All right, so that was horrible. That was a two. Uh, plus, what is it? Wisdom. So that's a three. Yeah, that's not great. Uh, yeah, you can still hear that scratching a little bit. You can still um, you don't hear that like wind anymore. But yeah, that's that's pretty much all you, you get off that. Um, and I don't probably don't see an easy way out of the shaft. What did we say was in the pack in the the pack? Yeah. Um, oh, oh, in your your like explorers pack. Yeah. Um, so the, in there, you've got a backpack, bedroll, a mess kit, tinderbox, uh, some torches, rations, a water skin and 50 feet of rope. Am I 50 feet away from the like broken stairs? Yeah, totally. Uh, well, if you yeah, you're probably almost exactly 50 feet away. But if you were to climb up, it would be a shorter distance. If you were to climb up the existing stairs that are that are still there. OK, cool. Um, so, yeah, the, the existing stairs go up about 20 feet and then the gap is maybe 15 feet. So it's it's only like 35 feet up. OK, can I set up the rope at the gap so that we could leave in a hurry if we needed to? I suppose so. Um, how, how do you plan on getting the, the rope up? there probably tying some sort of loop and then just kind of like trying to lasso the stair okay the the, like whatever is jutting out whatever broken pieces are jutting out from the stair yeah okay um so i'll I'll treat that like an attack roll on the stairs um i'll i'll give Mm -hmm. i'll give okay 
Yeah. So I'm going to say that you have advantage because you can try a bunch of times. And because mm-hmm. it's like not moving, I'm going to say that it the the you have to beat like I mean, it is it is above you and like rope isn't like exactly made for this. So I'm going to say that you have to beat just a 10. Um, so it, so you can roll twice. It's a 10 that you have to beat. You can add your dexterity to it. All right, cool. I'm So what I'm envisioning is sort of like that scene in Batman where it's talking about Bane as a child trying to climb out of the pit. And then there's those pieces of rocks and little Bane is jumping with the rope, but keeps. But yeah, but this time the rope actually works and you don't have to jump without the rope to make it out yeah. of the whatever. Um, all right, I'm going to roll. Oh, that was better. That was an 18. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, you uh, you throw that up there. You well, tell me how it tell me how it goes. Tell me how it goes. You totally land that. All right, cool. I improvise some sort of like slipknot and kind of in a very uncoordinated way, kind of like pretend I'm a cowboy swinging around my head and just kind of like eh, and just like <laughs> let loose the rope at the general direction of the stair, it miraculously somehow catches on a jutting piece of wood. Uh, and and I just kind of like pull it tight and kind of leave the end hanging where I can reach it on the lower bank of stairs. OK, as you do that, it goes taut uh, and, you know, sort of pull your weight on it to make sure that uh, that it's not going to just immediately break. Mm-hmm. You also uh, hear a bit of that scratching, and it's it's coming from uh, the wall next to you. Like that hole? Not the, the sort of hole that I mentioned that was, like, on the ground mm-hmm. level, but sort of, like, just from the wall of this shaft. You're hearing some scratching, uh. like, on the other side of the wall. Okay. Hmm. So there's something in the walls. Maybe. That's what you're telling me. Maybe, man. Who even knows? But like, I can't I can't see anything that would be scratching. Nope, uh, you don't you don't see anything. Um, if you, you know, look at the wall, uh, it just it looks, you know, just like rock. Um, it, it looks a little. Yeah, it just looks like rock. Cool. Uh, also, we don't have any like canaries in the pack, right? <laughs> Nothing that we can uh, keep track of. No, you do not. All right, cool. We'll. We'll rely on the flame and the lantern. If that goes out, we know we're screwed. OK. All right, cool. Well, now that the now that our exit plan has been uh, implemented, let's keep going. Let's keep going down back down the stairs and down the shaft. Cool. So you um walk down the uh, the stairs. There was that small hole in the wall uh, mm-hmm. and past that there was that larger like tunnel i guess um that leads Mm -hmm. deeper into the mine um how big is the small hole uh maybe so so you take a closer look at it um you rolled pretty bad investigation stuff earlier yeah that was bad yeah so you hadn't really noticed this but uh but taking a closer look directly at it you notice that there is a um a track going down out of that hole and down across the floor um and this track is you know, it's like a, it's a minecart track and the hole is probably, you know, the size of a minecart. And you can tell that uh, looking down that path, looking down into the hole, uh, you can see that it slowly like starts to slope upwards. OK, um, so random, like you can cut this if you want. Somehow Google Hangouts, as you were talking, managed to skip exactly the point where you're like, it's the size of and then you're like and then it just continued onwards so i have no idea what what it's the size of it's the size of a minecart okay so so this is a you know a track a minecart track that's going down into you know or coming down into this area that you are and it, it looks like maybe this uh this hole is just big enough for the minecart to go in and out Mm mm-hmm uh, so it's not t- it's tall enough to crawl into, but not stand up in. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to describe it. Cool. Tall enough to. to yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, let's not go down the creepy hole on the first go around. 
Okay. Uh, unless we can't find anything, um, that's what I'm going to say that Quail is going to do because she's not in the habit of crawling into small spaces. Cool. So I guess we walk down the path. Cool. So you walk down this path. Lee is holding up the uh, the lantern. Ah, uh, jeez. Uh, boss, uh, this is really a great, great place that you've taken us to, huh? Um, it's just sort of like touching the uh, the wooden supports as you guys are walking along. Uh, it's very like sturdy, but also like very old and, and dirty. As as you're walking along, you looking all along the walls can see um, a bit of like brassy color lacing the walls and you can see a little bit of blue a little bit of white lacing along the granite in this this tunnel and eventually this tunnel like opens up into a wider space again and i should also add there was like a little uh cart track riding along this most of this path right when you get to the the end of that cart track the tunnel opens up into a larger space um there's a little a little cart sitting right there and this larger space is just, you know, it looks like clawed out in various like pox along this space. Um, you can you can tell just from your your own experience, like they were like testing different directions, looking for, you know, to see if this if these veins like went in different directions, um, seeing if they could find anything. And uh, looking around, this is the end of this place. So so chances are they didn't find much but as you're you're walking around this space uh roll me an investigation check again Arkidoks. come on better rolls Ooh, that's an 18 plus plus two that's 20 nice so at uh one of the spots among all of you know the the granite the all of these other things you find this spot where all of these different um veins these this brassy pyrite the calcite and the uh lazarite um they all meet and they all combine and then expand and you see this 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 gem this blue this blue ore this blue stone in the wall that um is sort of shifting in your your sight as you like look at it from different angles it it uh it just seems to have this like holographic nature to it uh this sort of weird shifting nature to it uh and and uh yeah you see this um lapis tempus uh on this wall i found it you found it we did it see see hey lee wasn't it worth it wasn't it wasn't worth it to come down here into this creepy scratchy mine shaft uh yeah I, i i suppose so um i mean you know they're they're paying extra for us to come and find this ourselves so you know I'm I'm down. She takes her um the pickaxe that she was carrying, uh, which I believe I've I mentioned at some point that she was carrying that, hands it off to you, uh, and uh you can uh you can try to get that uh that that um lapis out. All right. I am going to pry away. Uh anything I need to roll for this or do I just grab it? I mean, I guess you can uh you can roll a strength check um with advantage. I, I guess, yeah, sure. Let's see. See how this goes. Cool. Well, that's a that's a sixteen, or a nineteen plus one. I I get that. I get that sucker out of the wall. You get that sucker out of the wall. Um, and you're you're like chipping away at it, like slamming, slamming, slamming. So it's making a lot of noise. It's making a, a good bit of noise. Um, as you're doing this, um, you trade off every once in a while with because this takes a while. You're you're chipping away at granite you occasionally will like trade off with uh with lee and every time you you hit against this you feel like this sort of like shake in your your feet uh until finally you uh deliver like a final blow which breaks out this chunk this hunk of um lapis tempus which is a little bigger than you expected it's like maybe football sized and hits the ground um you could try to get more if you'd like but you know this is going to be more than enough to do the job that you wanted Sweet. All right. I got some. It makes a little, you know, there's a little like quest completed noise. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, you you do that and um, roll me another perception check. Mm. Hmm. Oh, much better this time. Um, so that is a 16 plus two. 
uh, certainly too. Lee is um, grabbing the the Lapis Tempest, throwing it in her bag, um, and she's reaching to grab the pickaxe from you and, and uh, put it on her back. Um, she sees, or you see, uh, yeah, you hear um, some more of that uh, scritching and scratching and stuff, and uh, you turn to look down the tunnel that you um, you and Lee had walked you know, walked through to get to where you are now, and you see a soft uh, red glow um, slowly getting getting brighter. Ah, shoot. Okay. Well, here's a thing. Things that shouldn't have light. Can I cast Arcane Eye? Oh, okay. Sure. Because I want to see what's I want to see what's there before it gets here, so I can figure out if I can buy us some time. Okay, cool. Um, so you cast Arcane Eye. Uh, d- describe to me how that that looks to you uh, when you when you cast that. Okay, so it's theoretically an invisible magical eye within range that hovers um, that re- that I mentally receive visual information from, um, and it's got normal and dark vision out to thirty feet. I'm kind of like imagining that. Also, it lasts for up to an hour with concentration. I'm like imagining when you are have a quadcopter that has a camera on the bottom and you are looking at the view through VR glasses and you kind of see what the quadcopter sees. I'm imagining that if I concentrate on the eye and if I don't concentrate on the eye, I snap back to what I'm actually seeing. Gotcha. Um, I will say uh, as well that the arcane eye, um, you can move it as an action. Yes, it, it moves about the same speed that a person can like run. All right. So so that is that is just a, a part of the spell. That is not me like adding something. Cool. I'm I'm sending it down the path that we came from. Cool. Uh, so as this like snaps forward, this um, glowing thing like moves forward down this path, you suddenly see you and it enters your your vision. You're you look like you're sort of like flying down this uh, this tunnel um, and it doesn't take too long to see the source of this glow and it's a um it's just like it's an ant it's a a ant that's maybe six inches long and has a like glowing like butt uh glowing (laughs) thorax and uh and it's just sort of walking your direction do you stop does the arcane eye stop when you see that or do you like keep going down or or what what are you doing with um How far is this ant from us right now? And can I tell if that's the only source of light that's in that space right now? Uh, okay. so first of all, I'll tell you that it's probably about 60 feet away from you down the tunnel. Mm -hmm. But as far as uh, well, probably closer to like 100 feet away from you down the tunnel. Mm -hmm. But uh, roll me a perception check again through the eye um, to see if there's if you see anything else. Woo. Uh, so that's a 17 plus one. So that's 18. You can tell that there's um, an, there's m- another source of the same sort of light um, coming from farther down the tunnel. Mm-hmm. It, it seems actually a little bit brighter than mm. uh, than what this is giving off. Whether, you know. I'm not going to say anything about what you could take away from that, but uh, but yeah, there's. There's this light source from this this one glowing uh, ant, and then there's another one farther along, another light source that's so a little brighter. Lee, Lee, don't don't freak out. Uh, yeah. But there's something in the tunnel. Oh no. Oh geez. Um, so I don't know if you can see this, but my my dwarf senses are tingling. Uh huh. So I I cast Arcane Eye. Okay. And I can see that there is there's an ant. She she gives you like a look like oh okay um. Uh, but no, no no not 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 like a normal ant not like not like a a normal tiny ant. Not a, not wait okay what? <laughs> so so there's there is at least one very large ant, uh that is glowing. Oh jeez. And. How big are we? How big are we talking here? Oh, just just about, you know, the size of my hand. I don't know. Do they use inches? I don't know if that's the maybe they use centimeters. You can you can use inches. No, but this is we have the chance to invent this world and you 
They shouldn't use inches. <laughs> okay, centimeters. Yes. <laughs> anyway, it's about the size of my hand, and it's glowing. Ah, uh, jeez. But that that would be okay. But I see more glowing, and I think that uh, either means lots more ants or a very very big ant. <laughs> oh, oh, jeez, I don't. I what is this? What is this like? You know, a hundred a hundred horse sized ducks, or, <laughs> or, or th- what is this scenario that you're painting for me? I I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of this. Um, she uh pulls the pickaxe off of her off of her pack, um, and sort of like grips it uh nervously. Um, what does it look mean? Uh, like what what's what's the situation here? Uh, how much do you know? about ants how much do i know about ants uh roll me a nature check i guess yeah yeah can i animal handling this ant i mean you can try you can certainly try cool all right so i got a 15 on my nature check plus two so that's a 17 okay uh so you have never seen an ant this big before um you've also never seen one glowing before um Mm -hmm. however uh the the fact that you hadn't really seen anything magical at this point, and you know that like Lapis Tempus tends to sprout up around like magical things, leads you to believe that maybe this ant and perhaps its brethren um, are in some way magical. Uh, I will also say that um, how how much did you say you rolled? I got. 17 total 17 uh i will say that the ant was like in addition to being to glowing a soft red Mm -hmm. um it its coloring is a little orangish reddish Mm -hmm. which reminds you very strongly of uh like fire ants Mm -hmm. um that live around cirque um i'm going to say that ellen quail is probably not particularly interested in fighting and would typically try to avoid situations where direct combat is needed Mm -hmm. um so i mean i i'm all about trying to run past these things um i mean as long as there's there's not too many i'm totally down i'm totally down okay she she like like sort of adjusts her pack um gets it tight all right i will say that Remember that little side tunnel that we saw? I don't know where that goes, but I'm thinking we can hide in there and wait for the ants to pass if we can get all the ants into this room that we're currently in. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. I'm going to make a bunch of fog in the tunnel. Okay. And then I'm going to make a loud noise here. Okay. And bring all the ants here, because I think they've been following us, because I think they've heard us stomping (sighs) around. So I'm going to make a loud noise here. We are going to, uh, as soon as the loud noise happens, run, jump over the glowing ant in the fog, and go into this small tunnel and try and block that up and hide in there before the either very large ant or horde of new ants comes down this tunnel i i'm i'm down um how how are we gonna block off the the little tunnel do we have time to talk about this we okay we should just we're we're just gonna go go. we're just gonna go okay we're just gonna go um so uh so yeah do you just immediately cast the the fog thing or you just so i cast fog cloud okay which is down the tunnel yeah down the tunnel can I say that I've sent my eye, my vision past the other glowing ant at this point? Sure. Um, so you you've sent it a little bit farther down um, mm-hmm. and you have seen other uh, other small ants, uh, maybe like six inches. Um, you see one that's uh, closer to a foot, okay. um, but but you don't see any that are that are much bigger than that. Um, and there aren't tons like you've, you've only seen like maybe 10 or 12 uh, okay. At this point, and your arcane eye gets to the the main room, like mm-hmm. the, the, the bottom of that shaft. Um, mm-hmm. And looking around that space, uh, you see um, right at the top of the stairs where your rope is dangling, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that 
section of wall that you had heard some scratching behind has been like broken out and you mm-hmm. see uh you see a ant like peeking its head through um and this ant looks uh larger than the the other ones okay but it can't fit through that space so it was both lots of ants and a very large ant the very large ant has not managed to get into this space yet the ones that have gotten into this space that are like you know there's like 10 of them are are just like the the smaller ones they're just like six inches to a foot long okay and those ones are those ones are already down the tunnel about halfway to getting to you okay but i can i'm going to attempt to run past them in the in the fog yeah so what i will say um so you you cast this fog uh you said you were making a sound yes so i was also going to cast uh shatter oh okay um oh yeah because that makes a huge noise huh there's no uh probably not going to collapse the tunnel around us right um no uh no you you're probably not but i would say like maybe aim that towards one of those little test nooks yeah uh just just in case one of the like harder patches of granite yeah um so you do that but i want to be careful not to uh aim it in a way that would damage the ant because i'm not sure if hurting one of the ants would piss all of them off cool 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 that that makes sense um so yeah you you do that it makes this huge like crashing sound oh, lee lee cover your ears cover your ears uh, geez, lee. Uh, geez. um she covers her ears up yeah um describe what this this looks like um when you you do this all right so i basically like grab one of my little stained glass pieces this one's probably a little bit more complicated because it is a what second or third level smell and i basically just like ninja star it at the wall and it <laughs> shatters on impact Uh, And then it just like, I don't know if it actually creates light, makes a big noise. Yeah. And because it's hitting a hard piece of granite, it makes a sort of big echoey noise. Cool. The granite shatters um, behind it. Uh, It looks like it says, um, I mean, I'm not sure exactly. I guess a a 10 foot radius sphere shatters um, as this this happens and just, you know, shards of granite uh, go flying everywhere. Um, no, nothing to like nothing hurts you. You guys are, are far enough away, but it makes such a loud noise. And right as that happens, um, you guys start running into the fog. And I would like you to roll me a stealth check as you run past these these um, ants. Uh, and they're you're going to have advantage because you've mm-hmm. done a lot of stuff to like distract these things. And they're going to have disadvantages they can test. OK, so dexterity. Uh, so either get a 14 or ooh. Nat 20. Oh, that is very good because they they even with their disadvantage, they had gotten a 15. So it is a good, good, good thing. They're super perceptive ants. They're super perceptive ants. But yeah, with the natural 20, you guys are like running down this this path, um, running through the the fog. We're like running on the walls. You can see the fog is like filling up this space and you can see like the little bit of like glowing reddish orangish lights moving along the ground through the fog and you just sort of like hop over them as you're running through um as the the fog swirls around you uh and you just definitely avoid all of them and they just continue on the way they're going um until you burst out into the uh you burst out into the bottom of the of the mine shaft and um lee right behind you stops briefly and it's like (sighs) and then you look up and um that that larger ant that uh you had seen trying struggling to break through the the wall earlier Mm -hmm. it is it is still uh trying that um and you've seen that it's like shoved one of its legs out through that hole Mm -hmm. but uh but at this point um it is it is still stuck in that wall okay and it, it doesn't seem to have noticed you yet, possibly because of your your stealth roll. We've bypassed all the smaller ants. You've bypassed all of the smaller ants as um, at this point, they are, as far as you know, still going down that path towards where you were just a moment ago. All right. So my original plan was to hide in that side smaller shaft until all the ants had passed. 
But given that the large ant has not yet has not yet emerged, I'm going to say to Lee, Lee, I, th- I think let's let's try and get past that, dude. Like, let's let us book it out of here before he gets out of the wall, because I don't want to know what happens once he gets out of the wall. Uh, oh, yeah, I can totally agree with that. Um, so you guys are you're, you're going to try to climb up the rope? Yes, but I'm also going to. OK, how many? Jeez. Uh, OK, so I used trying to figure out what I can do. I can use four second and third level spells and I've used shatter. You've also used hypnotic pattern, so you can use any of the other ones still. Two more. Yeah. OK, and I can only. I am done with fourth level spells. Yes. I have also used one first level spell, which is fog cloud. Nope. No, you've I've two. used two. You've two. Um, does it count the two times that I've used Featherfall? Yes. Okay. So, oh, so used you've three. used three. Mm, good to know. Yeah. So you you uh, you have pretty limited um, spell selection at this point. Ooh. OK. I know what I should have done. Sorry, just trying to think through my options. Um, oh, quick question. Yo. Was the elevator at the bottom of the shaft? Um, the elevator was at. OK, so so you are at the like deep shaft. Right, right, right. Was the elevator at the bottom of the first shaft? No, it was not. It was still at the top and you had like hopped down. Ah, we jumped down. OK, did we see any ladders back there? Uh, no, you did not see any ladders. Um, you saw uh, a mine cart. Um, you saw some tracks that were leading into that uh, smaller hole. Um, you have the rope hanging from the second level of stairs. Um, mm-hmm. But that's that's pretty much all that is in this space. OK, the the ant is maybe like like you. There's enough space on the stairs that you could conceivably like go up to the rope without the ant being able to bite you. Okay. As long as you weren't like super reckless. It would definitely see you though. Okay. Um so. Uh Lee. Uh yeah. Uh I'm we're going to get out of here. We'll be okay. 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 Trust trust me on this. I'm starting up um this this is filling me with confidence. Do do some stretches real quick because okay, I'm going to do something that might that might piss off this big old this big old bug dude in the wall right now. <laughs> she she's holding the pickaxe above her her head and doing that sort of like side to side stretch that people do with a bat with a baseball bat sometimes. All right. Ah, uh, geez. Ah, uh, geez. Ah, uh, geez. OK, so and OK, I have a bow staff. Uh, yeah. OK, cool. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I am going to cast Blinding Smite. I think I cast it on myself and it takes effect when I hit something. Uh, yeah, um, the next time you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack during the spell's duration, um, your weapon flares with bright light. Uh, so yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Lee, we're going to book it up those stairs and we're going to use that rope uh, that we set up and get on those stairs. And as soon as we pass that ant, I am going to blind it, probably also piss it the hell off. OK, uh, so we're going to run okay, as soon okay. as that happens. All right. Um. Great. Okay. Cool. Nice. Nice and go. Nice and cool. Nice and great. All right. Let's. Okay. Um. And she. Uh. She is like standing like kind of behind you. Um. But is sort of gotten into like a sprint position. Um. And has strapped the pickaxe back onto her back. Mm -hmm. Uh. Because she wants her hands free. um, All right. For when she gets up there. Cool. And uh. So, Lee, Lee, you go first. OK. Um, it's OK. Like the, the animals. Well, can it see us when we're at the bottom of the shaft or is it not quite far enough out yet? It, it probably could see you, but um, I'm going to say that that you've had this conversation in the first like 30 seconds that you've run down there and you're still mm-hmm. coasting on that critical success. 
uh, uh, of okay. the self check. So it has not noticed you yet. Um, so it'll it'll definitely see you when you get up there. But yeah. OK, so never mind. I'm not going to cast it on my bow staff. I'm going to cast it on my light hammer and throw that at the ant before it can see us. OK, cool. All right. I'm down with that. Oh, uh, wait, with a melee weapon attack. So it has to you. You have to. It can't be a ranged attack. Oh, whoops. Yeah, okay. that's a really good. That was a really good idea. Um, but blinding smite has to be a, a melee attack. Cool. Bow staff it is then. Um, but I will try and hit it like reach as far as my range will let me. So I will hit it before it sees me. Sweet. And I will let Lee know right before I'm going to do it so that she can cover her eyes and not be blinded or smited. OK, so is she is she are you having her run past the thing first and then you're going to hit it or is she, are you going to hit it and then she's going to run? Well, so I assume that by the time we I get close enough to hit it, it's already seen us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 probably. OK, so I'll have I'll have Lee uh lee like you go run past it it'll see us but that's fine i'm going to i'm going to blind it uh i really hope this works i'm sorry if it doesn't we're gonna make it out of here we'll be okay lee you've got longer legs than me so just just go just leave me behind if you don't see me i'll be i'll be right behind you Uh, okay just run with your run with your long human legs uh, OK, um, so she is, uh, you know, crouches down in a sprinting position, at, you know, the second level of these these stairs and then just shoots up um, the the ant sort of like swings its head. It, it's you as you've gotten closer, you've realized this one is is really quite big um, and it swings its head, but it can't quite reach her. It's its leg and antennae like brush against her as she runs by. Uh, but she grabs onto the rope and starts pulling herself up um, and, and is climbing up uh, the wall, sort of like reverse belaying, I guess, um, or re- reverse repelling, I should say. And yeah, you're going to you're going to take a swing at it. Uh, yeah, I also climb up the same way that she did. Um, as soon as I get to that top of the upper level of stairs within reach of the ant, I will just jam that staff in its eye. OK, so so when you said you climbed up, you're climbing up the, the stairs. You're not climbing up the rope yet. Yes. OK, uh, well, because it can't reach me if I climb up the rope still. Yeah. So if if you were to climb up the rope, um, yep. then you'd have to walk past it to climb up the rope and mm-hmm once you climbed up the rope it can't reach you but it could potentially finish getting out of the hole and chase after you guys okay great i'm gonna hit it sweet um so you uh so right you know you grab onto the rope and right before you start climbing up you slap this thing in the face with your bow staff uh roll me an attack roll um that's with a six uh that is with a a d20 um still d20 Yeah, D20 and uh, add your uh, strength modifier. Okay, so that was a 16 plus strength is plus one, so 17. And uh, you also get your proficiency modifier, but you've still already like totally, totally, totally hit this thing. Um, As you you slam this down uh, against this thing, um, Mm -hmm. there is just this this crackle of of radiant bright light. just like erupts from your your bow staff. Uh, so I need you to roll one uh, D six plus strength for the bludgeoning damage of your bow staff. OK, um, so that's one D six plus one. So that's a five plus six. So that's a six. OK, and uh, you are also going to add um, your radiant damage from the blinding smite, which is three D eight. So okay. roll the, the eight sided dice three times. So that's five plus eight. Yes. Uh, so that's 13 plus 2, 15. 15. Uh, and those six, so 20, 21. Um, so you like slam down on this thing, this this eruption of, of bright, bright, bright light. Uh, and the the ant like rears back um, as you you hit it in the face. Uh, and it uh, it so you you. It doesn't I don't guess it wouldn't like scream or anything. I don't think ants can make that sort of noise. <laughs> but uh, but it like it pulls itself back into the hole and you can tell like it is it has been like cracked. It has been savaged. And um, 
you, you kind of get the the sense that it probably if 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 ants can see this thing cannot see uh, anymore. And yeah, you are able to continue uh, climbing up as it pulls away, though, you start to see a few of a few smaller ants um, crawling out of that hole. The, the ones that are like six inches and within a few moments, uh, by the time you've you've climbed to the top of this rope and you are you are at these stairs again uh, to continue up the shaft you look down and uh there are six or seven um of the smaller ants pouring out of this hole all right uh and starting to climb up towards you cool um i can i can i just set all the stairs on fire with produce flame <laughs> Are you gonna are you gonna finish going up the stairs first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, can yeah, I yeah, just yeah. like like shoot fire behind me? Yeah, totally. Uh, I I don't think you even need to roll for that. Um, as you you are climbing up, uh, well, describe describe this to me. So these are sort of zigzagging wooden stairs going up the side of the shaft. Um, okay. You- cool. I just I have like a whole stack of these little like fire, like little like. Produce the flame pieces of glasses and I'm just like pfft, just like throwing them <laughs> behind me, just like tossing them on the ground and running little fire bombs, little Molotov cocktails. Yeah. And I'm like hoping that the wood is old enough and shitty enough that like it just catches. Yeah. Um, as you were going, uh, you were you were doing that and it is it is like igniting pretty fast uh, after the first couple. You actually start to, you know, Go. You realize, oh shit! Maybe I could. I should go aim a little bit farther down before I throw one because, like, this is going up really fast. Um, and by the time you are, you are, you are maybe like two, two stories. I don't know, two like zigzags of the stairs from the top. Uh, you hear um the bottom row collapse, and uh, and you look down, and there's the these these ants are like you know covered with debris, and like they're they're trying to make their way up. Um, and and you kind of get the the sense that they're not really being perturbed by the fire at all. They're just they're getting stopped by the the debris falling down uh, upon them. And uh, and yeah, you get to the top and uh, and it's just this 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 bonfire, this pit of flames uh, below you way to, way at the bottom of the shaft. That that is that is what you see there. Uh, are you just gonna continue running running out? We are we are going to book it on out of there. And I guess as we, I don't know if anything else is happening, but uh, whatever we get closer, um, I assume that Lee is pretty far ahead of me. And I think as I'm running, every so often, um, every so often, I will check with the arcane eye to see what's behind us. Gotcha. Um, so you you uh, are looking with this arcane eye. It's it's sort of like you've had it raising um, up the the shaft and following you. And uh, you have it sort of hovering on the shaft at the top of the shaft um, to make sure that it can it can see. By the time you get reached that metal grate, um, that that metal door um, that had been uh, that was near the exit of this this tunnel, your arcane arcane eye sees just a a flood of these these ants um reaching the top uh including some that are that are three feet long some that are are six feet long um big big old six feet long is real big um maybe like three or four feet long um crawling over the edge of this thing and following uh falling behind you um but uh you push open the um the metal grate it, it's not locked uh, and continue on to the the main elevator room. Cool. Can I lock the metal grate behind me? Yes. Or you do can. I not have time? You you totally can. It, it is a metal. Uh, it is a a like I did mention that there was a lock there. Um, so you uh, close it behind you. Um, uh, twist uh, twist a lock and it locks in place uh, behind you and uh, you run uh you you are like running your way down there and um you hear uh what what's going on down there i hear i smell some smoke and stuff uh and and as you like walk into the elevator room you see um a old gnomish man uh standing with a elevator he has a um little glowing arcane uh uh medallion i guess um in his hand um resting uh next to the control panel of the elevator shaft and he's like man this what i was worried about you guys with the ghosts down here and stuff are you guys doing okay comstock we need to leave now now 
pull that shaft. I, I assume that I am just getting into this room and I have not yet not yet reached it, but I am screaming at Lee to like <laughs> grab that and yeah. start running the elevator. Totally. Um, so so you had heard Comstock starting to shout uh, or starting to like talk as Lee had entered the room um, and you follow right after while he's like mid sentence and say all that stuff. She's like catching her breath um, and you guys just sort of run over, slam into the elevator. It's like, well, geez, guys, I told you they were ghosts. It's not going to hurt you or anything. It's just some spirits. And as you look down the path uh, back from where you came, you see the glowing intensify. You see, you feel a heat building up. And right then, the elevator begins to shake and shudder and move and pull you up above ground, back from where you came. So, Ellen, it's been really fun having you around. Um, I hope you've had a good time. I did. Um, and, and listeners, I hope you've had a good time. Um, this episode has been a very long episode, so I'll see how how it gets edited down. It might end up getting split into two. We'll see how that goes. Thanks for, for joining us again, and uh, we're going to be starting a new, uh, new arc in a couple weeks. So uh, see you guys next time. Mm-hmm. Um, un- until then, uh, how, how do you want to how do you want to sign off here? Um, I forgot what the sign off was. Is there a sign off? Um. This has been a side character quest. Is there a sign off? I always wanted to do that. <laughs>the joy drops for the use of not drunk as our intro and outro music find them at thejoydrops.com you can find us at sidecharacterquest.com at scq podcast on twitter or by email at sidecharacterquest at gmail.com this is going to get cut and put in the bloopers oh man so you guys you guys were you guys uh find what you're looking for he gives you a, a, a kind of a dirty look um like you guys you guys do all your your, your tourism i guess uh you have a good time you gonna, uh, you gonna review us on you review us well with your your buddies and your companions oh yeah yeah we'll give it a hundred percent actually better idea why don't you Take advantage of this new trend in tourism and say that yes. you're going to give haunted mind tours. And I think that'll oh. be a really big boom in business for you. Uh, Lee sort of like elbows you like, are you are you trying to like set this guy up to die? God. Uh, and uh, and uh, are you trying to set this guy up to die or something? This is kind of a dangerous mind. To have. Well, that sounds like a great idea. I love it. I think I'll try that with the next folks that can make their way over here.